Hi, and welcome back. Hope you're giving yourself a little bit of a break, a little bit of a mental break between each of these lectures. Welcome back. Now we're going to touch on mutations and reminding you that variation is the stuff that natural selection works on. It's the stuff of evolution and that mutations are the ultimate source, source of variation and that when we tend to think we want to think about mutations as like X-Men, but mutations happen constantly. They happen naturally. And this is what natural selection operates on is these naturally occurring mutation. So we're just going to talk about, we're going to overview mutations. The first thing to consider is that there are two broad categories of mutations, non-synonymous mutations, and non-synonymous mutations alter an amino acid. Synonymous mutations do not alter an amino acid. So what this means is this is some change in the sequence of the DNA and you can change the sequence of the DNA such that when the protein is constructed, you get a different amino acid. Or you can change such that when the protein is constructed, you don't alter an amino acid. So the sequence of amino acids that's going to make up that protein is the same if you have a synonymous mutation. And I think a quick, easy way to remember this is when we think about synonyms. If you're thinking about a word, a synonym for a word, it means the same thing. A synonymous mutation essentially means the same thing when it comes to the protein. We're generally talking about, um, or one of the things we can talk about when we're talking about change at the level of a DNA is called a point mutation. So it's a change at a single point, is a point mutation, change to one single base. So here, only in this sequence, only one base changed. This is a point mutation, T changed to A. Then we have some broader mutations that are also very common. Um, but first we're gonna talk about how even something as simple as a point mutation can make a really big change. In our beta hemoglobin gene, and we've touched on hemoglobin before, we know this is a big gene family. Beta hemoglobin is critical to our body's ability to carry oxygen. This CCT, GAG, GAG is just an excerpt from one section of this beta hemoglobin gene. And underneath each, I've given you what amino acid these codons produce. So remember, perhaps you remember, that these sections of three are codons, and each codon encodes a specific amino acid. When the RNA is being read, it'll read it in triplets, it'll read it in three, and insert the corresponding amino acid. Hopefully that's coming back from genetics. In humans, what I've given you next at the bottom is two changes that really do occur in our genome. We can get change one, we can get change two, and these are just two examples. There are other changes, of course, that can happen. And so what I would like you to do is with your knowledge of what synonymous and non-synonymous means is using this chart that hopefully looks familiar from genetics, figure out which of these two changes, is it this one or this one, is change number one or change number two, non-synonymous. Um, it looks like some important things didn't, so this is our first, second position. Those did not show up, third position. And if you need to take a minute and reorient, reorient yourself, 
with the amino acid chart, that is so completely understandable. Um, I'm also partially standing in front of it, which probably doesn't help. You move me out of the way. Um, so look at this chart. I'm going to give you 30 seconds before I actually turn on the question so that you can look at the chart. Of course, you're welcome to pull up a chart from somewhere else. If you just Google amino acid chart or codon chart, you'll be able to pull it up. Which one of these is a synonymous change and which one of these is a non-synonymous change? Also, pause. I forget that you can do that. Pause the video for as long as you need. Okay, so real life example of a single change in a single base. So a single change in a single base is called a what? Go back a couple slides if you can't remember. Single change in a single base. These are real changes. And you can see on the left that we have a change from that, that middle codon, the second codon, changes from GAG -G to GAA. And when we change from GAG -G to GAA, we still get the same amino acid. So that would be a synonymous mutation. But over on the right, we instead of changing the last base in the triplet, in the codon, we change from GAG -G to GTG. This one change, this single change leads to cystic fibrosis. So you see this sort of sickle shape, these little red things down, these little red drawings at the bottom, these are red blood cells. And in this beta hemoglobin gene, this, this one change here leads to sickle cell anemia, that one, that one single change. I think that that's a really cool example. So those are point mutations. Next, we're gonna kind of go over some structural mutations. So in my super beautiful artistic drawing here of a chromosome, what the different color lines represent are um, different, it, it's a different sequence, a certain sequence of bases. It doesn't matter which bases they are, it's just they're in, the, in this specific order. So a structural mutation, or one of the structural mutations is a deletion. This one's pretty easy. So what happened was we had this section here in the chromosome on the left. On the right, it's been deleted, it's gone. So we're missing that entire section of that chromosome. Easy peasy. Another structural mutation um, is an insertion. So in this case, instead of having one copy of these four uh, base pairs, now we have two copies of those four base pairs. And Huntington's disease is caused by a bunch of insertions into the, the Huntington's gene. So insertions of this specific triplet, CAG. So there are several places where this CAG triplet gets inserted into a gene called the Huntington's gene, and that leads to Huntington's disease. Then we have um, fissions. I like this word, like nuclear fission, separated, breaking it apart. So what we do is in a fission is you have a single chromosome and that single chromosome gets broken apart. Uh, apparently, omosome, there we go, fissions. <laughs> One chromosome breaks into two chromosomes. This happens all the time. And, and we see this a lot in speciation. We see this in the evolution of sex chromosomes. You have a single chromosome and through some processes, it breaks apart and these two pieces be each become their own separate chromosomes that now each have their own evolutionary trajectory. Okay, then of course you have the opposite, fusions, where you have two chromosomes, they started out as two, they fuse, and now you have a single chromosome. We, we see this in our evolutionary history when um, we our evolutionary lineage, when our branch diverged from that of the other great apes, we see, um, we see a fusion. They have more chromosomes than we do. And if we study the structure, we study the genetic code of those chromosomes, we see that two chromosomes 
that our ancestors, our, our common ancestor had two chromosomes. And in our branch, in our lineage, those chromosomes fused. And in the other great ape lineage, those chromosomes did not fuse. Okay. Um, and then last but certainly not least, it may not be super obvious, this is an inversion. So you can have a section of a chromosome that gets flipped. So we have a double break. So there's a break here and a break here. And when that gets repaired, it got stuck in backwards. That's an inversion. These are hopefully pretty familiar. And then something that hopefully is also familiar from genetics is whole genome duplication, which is wicked cool and is a source of um, variation in plants. We see whole genome duplication not uncommonly in plants. There are some animals where we also see this, but it's not very common. So what happens is through the process of meiosis, we should expect to go from a diploid cell to a haploid cell. And instead of going from a diploid cell to a haploid cell, we go from a diploid cell to a diploid cell. We don't go haploid. So meiosis, you can kind of, basically meiosis fails. Okay. We fail to go haploid. So what, what we should have, instead of having four chromosomes, instead of having each of the homologs, we should only have one at the end of meiosis, remember? And sometimes what happens, that doesn't work. We don't, we don't get division of those as we're supposed to in meiosis. And you get a gamete that has both of the homologs. If that gamete successfully fuses with another gamete, and in this case, I'm gonna draw a sperm because my, my other little drawing just to me just looks like an egg. So now we fuse with another gamete that is haploid. And so then what we end up with is instead of a diploid organism, we end up with a triploid organism. So we end up with one, two, three of these. And I, I don't have all of the fancy colors when I'm drawing on the fly. So now we get whole genome duplication. Another cool source of speciation is this whole genome duplication. Okay, so that's our quick overview of mutations. Next, we're gonna take all of this stuff that we overviewed and we're gonna pull it in um, and learn the concept of Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, which I think will probably be new um, for most for most of you. So I'll see you back here then.